Hey you little beans. It's me again, back with another video. I should really think of another catchphrase but in a case, look at this. What the actual duck? 6k subs in what? A week? Did I just pull a pro gamer move? Because WTF that's a lot, thank you so much for enjoying my shitty content and supporting me. The second part is finally here, yay. Yeah all were waiting for this but I might have to apologize because it's trash. I want to throw it away, burn it, I don't care, I hate it so much. This might be the first time I feel burdened and pressured to meet people's expectations so that's probably why. Right, before I forgot about it again, I need to confirm that this is an alternate universe where I why in both worlds are dating. The canon and fan basically meant their personalities blah blah. So to those who left a hate comment saying this is a scam, you might want to read descriptions beforehand. Next, I want to thank these people for helping me brainstorm and proofread my stuff, it helps a lot. Another thing, English isn't my first language. There are grammar and audio mistakes along with repetitive words so I'm sorry about that. Warning, this video contains vulgar words. I think that's it. Yeah, enjoy this creation I'm not so proud of. In another morning, when the sun still has yet to shine, Oikor was already in his gym clothes and getting ready to go out. Once he heard knocking that came from the door, he grabbed a toast and practically shoved it in his mouth. Adjusting the bag on his shoulder, he twisted the knob and was greeted by the sight of Iwazumi with his typical brooding face that's actually considered as his calm expression. Oikor took a bite of his food, smiling at the other boy. Let's go. Both of them began to walk together for morning practice. Oikor finally finished his breakfast. Looking at the vast dark sky above, there was a small distance between them, one that puts Iwazumi in unease. Usually, Oikora would cling to him like some kind of koala, and Iwazumi would hit his head once, but left him be in the end. Today, it's like the brunette does not have any intention to touch him. Toru, Oikora almost jumped, startled by the sudden call of his first name. Yes, why aren't you? Iwazumi trailed off and realized how embarrassing it is to say it out loud. His face flushed red, but thankfully, it wasn't too apparent because of the darkness. Hum, and never mind. He grumbled under his breath, turning away from the curious boy. What is it? It's nothing. Well it's definitely something. I said it's nothing idiot. Gap, why are you so angry all the time? Shut up. Boy Kaur inched closer, tilting his head to observe Iwazuma's face more clearly. Is something bothering you? The black haired male stayed silent for a while before he spoke. You're not being clingy. A, isn't that good, but you're a clingy person, so, I, you'd usually cling to my arm or something, it's not like you to be like this, but doesn't it annoy you when I act that way? When he was met with silence, Oikora felt nothing but confusion, then suddenly, crap Oikora, ah, trashy Oikora, hey, shit Oikora, no stop pret Oikora, I said still wait, now, it was Oikora's turn to be flustered, anyone could see the steam coming out of his ears as he tried to hide his face with his hands, wah hey, that's not fair, you can't just insult me and then, at the sweet sound of Iwazuma's chuckle, Oikora's head perked up and immediately stared at the smile on his boyfriend's face, you're a dumbass, and you're mean, you hear me, mean, doesn't change the fact that you're an idiot. Why the hell do you think I'd find you annoying? You can grab my arm. I don't care. You don't. I mean, I can. You're my boyfriend. Of course you can. Okay. He was reluctant to do it at first, but then with no hesitation, they had intertwined their hands together. Boy Koa locked his gaze at the ground while Iwazumi turned away, blushing furiously. You've been acting like this since weekend. You know you can tell me anything. Huh. I'm not dense. I know how insecure you can be Oikora. Especially when it comes to your skills and talent. I won't push you to tell me. But it's obviously been in your mind for some time. Just know to not keep it to yourself all the time like a blockhead. I, Iwa-chan, what do you do when someone hurts you? Punch them in the face. No. Oikora huffed. I mean... Someone who hurts your feelings constantly, but they're your friends. 
people you're really close to and trust. Why is anyone hurting you? No, no. It's my cousin's problem and it's been stuck on my mind for some time. It's not even surprising at how smooth the lie rolled off his tongue. Hum. Why would they hurt a friend though? Because friends don't do that to each other. You sure it's not a one-sided friendship? Maybe. In that case, I would tell them about my thoughts. If they can't accept those things, then they are not worth it. I would probably cut them off and walk away. After punching them in the face of course, why are you so obsessed with punching people? Without realizing, they were no longer holding hands and Oikawa suddenly felt a hard smack on his shoulder. Ow, this is abuse, he cried out dramatically while Iwazumi rolled his eyes. It's called affection. Anyways, if that's what's bothering you, don't stress yourself with it. Like you said, it's not your problem, right? But I'd like to help. Ugh, I told you not to stick your nose into people's business and this is what you do. Looking at Oikawa's pouty face, Iwazumi sighed. It doesn't matter what I would do. What matters is if your cousin have the guts to stand up for themselves. What if they don't? Iwazumi shrugged. Too bad. It's either they do and walk away, or suffer with those toxic people for the rest of their life. Jeez, you sound so cruel sometimes. Oikawa muttered loud enough to reach his boyfriend's ears. A thank you would be nice. No, that was terrible. I'm seconds away from kicking your ass. Sorry sorry. Please don't. Although Oikawa said the advice was practically useless. His mind raced at the words as they circled around his brain non-stop. What matters is if they have the guts to stand up for themselves. Does he? In the other world, he was lying on his bed, arms sprung open as he stared at the ceiling, closing his eyes. Oikawa sighed. His hand slowly touched the bruise on his right cheek. Ha, seriously, this world sucks. I want my Iwa-chan back. Well, at least the situation improved a bit. I heard those jerks are suspended. Hopefully, they'll be kicked out soon. A few seconds later, his phone buzzes. He glanced at it without any intention to check. But when he saw Atsumu's name, the brown-haired male quickly opened the messages. Private messages between Oikora and Atsumu. Koa babe. Oikora. Oh I. Jeez. You haven't been online for so long. I miss you. Oikora is online. Atsumu. Who that name is weird coming from you. Used Sumu WTF. Anyways. Are you okay? A. Me. I'm feeling great. How are you? Gap. Seriously. You haven't popped up in the group chat since that day. Everyone misses you. Do they? The only ones who have personally texted me are Chibi-chan, Mr. Refreshing, Yahuba-chan, the pretty boy, and you. Because you haven't opened the GC in forever. Relax. It's only been a few days. They'll live. Besides, I don't want to be there and watch them make fun of me again. You're really doing this. Of course. They hurt me. So I decided to do something about it. Simple as that. Tsumu, yes, aren't you also hurt? Well, I mean, I got used to it so it's fine. No one has to get used to that. I see most of them aren't listening to you. I stood up for myself. You can too. I, that rhymed. Don't change the subject. Now come be petty with me. Do you really think I can do that? I mean, Omi is definitely gonna be mad. Don't care. He treats you like shit anyway. He doesn't. He literally calls you a germ and you can't even touch him. That's because of his germophobia. Doesn't mean he can call you that and treat you coldly. For fuck's sake. You two are dating. Right. When was the last time he told you he loves you? When was the last time he makes an effort for you? Exactly. Come to the dark side. Alright fine. God, why do I feel like you're totally a different person? Yikes. Why? Is it because I'm more outspoken? Yes. You'd usually just go with what everyone was saying. And when- And then he'd tell me to shut the fuck up. I know the drill baby. I'm gonna regret this. Awesome who's gonna beat my ass. Then kick back. I guess I could. Perfect. Because I have a plan. Lloyd Corner threw his phone aside once the conversation was over. What in the name of donkey shit was that? This Atsumu is totally nicer than that cocky asshole. 
He growled at the thought of Adsumu in his world, looking at him with challenging eyes and that familiar condescending smile. Then Oikawa shuddered slightly as he compared both Atsumus. Alternate universes are scary. He shakes his head to get rid of the unnecessary thoughts. Oikawa has to focus. Because just today, the team was informed that they'll be having a practice match in two days. With whom, you ask? Shirato fucking Zora. There couldn't be a better timing. Uh, but why would they invite Aoba Jose's team when they are considered as an average? They cold just invited those people who went to nationals, narrowing his eyes at the wall. He gripped onto the bedsheet under him tightly. Whatever, I'm gonna crush him to a pulp no matter what. But first, dinner. The next day was nothing special. There weren't any people bothering him, and again. He skipped morning practice to take care of the house and avoid his teammates. But let's not talk about that. Being popular has its perks, although he doesn't have any close friends like his relationship with Iwamaki and Matson. His classmates would talk to him a lot. It's not as lonely as he thought it would be. Right now, it was break time, and the teacher still has yet to enter the classroom, so a random classmate who sat next to him decided to start a conversation. Oikoa-kun. Oh, what's up? Not to seem nosy or anything. I guess everyone else has been wondering too. What's going on with you and your friends? Me. And who? Um, your friends. Again. Who? Uh, Iwazumi, Hanamaki, and Matsukawa. Oikoa merely shrugged. Never heard of such irrelevance in my life. His classmate was found speechless, and as if on cue, a teacher walked in. Then the next lesson began. Hours passed by like seconds, and Oikor soon realized that this is probably the longest time he's away from his friends. Not talking to them for four days straight isn't something he's used to. As he walked through the hallway, heading towards the gym, he met Yahaba around the corners and the boy waved at him eagerly with a smile. Captain. Yahoo! Yahaba chan Good afternoon. After they exchanged their greetings, they continued on their way, walking side by side. There was a comfortable silence, until Yahaba broke it. Hey Oikora-san, hum, well, uh, I know you're mad at the team, so, why do you still act friendly, and like, you know, you're being normal, I guess if I'm in your position, I would avoid everyone, or get nervous about it, I thought you would glare at them, and start treating them coldly or something, I guess I could do that, but there seems to be something you've forgotten, I'm a captain, and I have a responsibility, I was chosen to lead the team, until I graduate and that's what I'm going to do, it does doesn't matter what they did to me outside of volleyball, I have to keep our dynamics going if we want to win matches and go to nationals. Whoa, you sound so professional and cool, I'm amazed. Oikora narrowed his vision, turning towards Yahaba to playfully glare at him, but his gaze gradually softened when he spotted the small admiration in the younger boy's eyes who looked down onto the ground with a small smile. You know, Yahaba-chan, you'd make a great captain. War am me? Yahaba snapped his head, eyes almost bulging out of their sockets. No no, how could I? I mean, I'm not even at your level, and uh, I'm always benched anyways. I couldn't possibly be a captain. Ha ha ha, hum. Boy Cora humped, raising a bro, while he looked at the shorter male skeptically as he tried to hide his devious smirk. What's this? Self-doubt getting the best of you. And nope. It's just, if I can never be as good as you, then what's the point? Ugh. Listen. All of that doesn't matter. You're good as you are. Besides, being the captain isn't about how skilled you are or how much you stand out on the court. It's about leading the team and being able to push them to be better. And out of everyone, you're the most qualified. I don't know. Yahaba's words trailed off once they realized they were standing in front of the gym doors. Oikora looked at him from the corner of his eyes before a genuine smile tugged on his lips one last time. You don't have to say anything now. There's still a long way to go. But at least think about it. Yeah. Then Yahaba was left alone with a thoughtful expression on his face. In the other world, Iwa-chan, Oikora called out as he sets the ball up, and Iwazumi followed after. 
jumping up before smashing the ball down on the other side of the court. The whistle blew, signaling the end of the match and both boys high-fived each other at their victory. Mackie, who played on the other side of the team, groaned. Of course they would win. They have Oyakura and Iwazumi. RR. Jealousy doesn't suit you Mackie. Hanamaki stared at him, unimpressed. Then Kindeichi approached from behind. Well, I guess we can agree whichever team has Oikora Sen in them, they're lucky. Ha. Huh. Kunami peeked his head in between Oikora and Iwazuma's figure, face still as unmotivated as ever. Definitely, the brunette closed his eyes, shaking his head before he spoke in a nonchalant tone. Sheesh, you guys are giving me too much credit. It's because our team has more offense members. I have nothing to do with it. He fell to the floor the moment he felt something hard smacking his back and pushing him forward. Iwazumi had headbutted him. Iwa-chan, I told you to not make comments like that anymore Shitakura. Comments like what, you little. The dark-haired male was about to jump him, but was quickly held back by Kandachi. As a response, Iwazumi kept telling him to let go, glaring at his childhood best friend. Oikoa himself was confused, but thankfully, Matson was there to save his poor brain as he walked closer with a bottle of water in hand. He means you should stop disregarding your capabilities. A. Hey, really, I thought that was obvious. He never liked seeing you be like that. Oikawa stared blankly at the sight of Iwazumi struggling out of Kandachi's hold and basically yelling how he won't kill the captain. What's with that look? Nothing. I guess I finally realized how different this is. Huh. Before Matsukawa could question it, Oikawa stood up with a bright grin decorating his features. I guess that's it for this morning practice. Great teamwork everyone. See you all after school. They packed up their stuff and quickly changed their clothes. Class is going to start in about 20 minutes and they definitely wouldn't want to get in trouble for being late. We'll be going first. Kindeichi waved at his apocalypseman then continued to chase after Kunami who walked ahead of him. Alright, let's go his sentence was cut off when a few heads popped up from the gym door. Oikoa-kun, good morning. Senpei, hi, you look really good today. Have you eaten? I've made something for you. Right, the fangirls. Ahaha, <laughs> sorry everyone, but I have to get going now. Maybe I'll see you later. Or, but Senpei, just a few minutes. Did you post another picture in your social media last week? Where was that? Oh, I've also bought some cookies. I saw you liking them a lot a few days ago. Wait, are you using a new cologne? He mentally sighed, no matter how much he felt uncomfortable right now, he really didn't have the heart to drive them away, but what the heck, are they really spying on the shops his alternate self went to and the food he bought, stalking his social media, smelling him, um, suddenly, all of them felt a murderous aura that came from behind him, the girls shuddered, almost shrieking in fear, while Oikora slowly turned his head to see a frightening Iwazumi and amused looking Maki and Matson. You're making him uncomfortable. Leave. Ah, we are sorry. Terribly sorry. Have a nice day Oikoa-kun. Faster than the flash. They bolted out of the gym. Bahahaha. <laughs> that was well deserved. Serves them right. I don't understand why and how you still put up with the Oikoa. Oh, so they really are stalkers. That's creepy. Let's just get to class or we'll be late. Iwazumi grumbled as he pulled Oikora along by the back of his collar. Iwa, ow ow, you're choking me. You two stop giggling and help. You think we should help bro? Nah bro, let the lovebirds be. Let's pray he'll survive another day on earth. Fuck you. Sounds pretty gay to me. Ugh. In the other world. Truthfully, Iwazumi Hajime didn't understand. Where did everything go wrong? Meeting Oikoa was a chance, but befriending him was a choice. And as far as he knew, he never regretted his decision. Plus, it's not like there are any pros and cons when it comes to being best friends with Oikoa. It just happens naturally. However, he had to admit, his childhood friend was always able to bring out the best in him. Iwazumi is seen as an angry grumpy guy with violent tendencies, but with Oikoa, he was just Iwazumi. No judgmental opinion of others could get to him, but now, it seemed like he finally noticed the hole he had fallen into and couldn't get out. He felt awful, terrible, confused. Why are people telling them to apologize? Why does Oikoa act this way? What did they do to make him be like that? Millions of questions raced around his brain all at once as he finished changing into his sports were. Are they in the wrong? 
but why, they simply acted like usual, and nothing was different until Oikor finally snapped, all of you are always so harsh on him, he remembered reading Akash's text from the group chat, were they really, it's not like Oikor didn't deserve it, the guy is cocky as hell, no one should feed his already huge ego, but what is this sinking feeling inside his stomach, he didn't like it one bit. Iwayzumi wasn't given enough time to think when his ex-boyfriend walked through the door, looking confident as ever with his signature charming smile. The brunette greeted Yahuba and Watari as usual and acted as if the rest of the team are invisible. Matson approached the dark-haired male, nudging him slightly as he glances at the ever-so-cheerful Oikora. Iwayzumi understood immediately and shake his head. No, we don't. We don't need him. We'll be fine. Will they? Better yet, will he? To break the ice, Coach Arihata soon arrived to make an announcement. Everyone, gather around and prepare your stuff. The bus is going to drive us to Shiratori's or soon so make sure to not leave anything behind. Yes sir. Everyone saluted as they grabbed their own belongings. Coach Mizoguchi who stood beside Arihata watched as the team quietly exited the room. They seem tense. Shouldn't we do something? No. I think we shouldn't meddle in their problems. A. Why? Wouldn't it affect their plays? Of course. But I'm sure they knew that better than anyone else. Mizoguchi glances at the carefree older man who was smiling lightheartedly. Have a little more faith in them. Inside the bus, Oikor have chosen to sit in the middle, right beside the window. His head rests against the glass whilst his brown colored eyes stared at his faded reflection. Then he felt a shuffle next to him, but the familiar scent was enough for him to recognize who it was. Maki had taken a seat wordlessly, but Oikor didn't spare him a single glance. The fawn-haired male found himself in a difficult situation. He had intended to sit there in the first place, but now that he did, he couldn't bring any words out of his mouth. Oikora, the certain blinked when he heard his name being called quietly. Oikora whirled his head to look at Maki. His eyes weren't filled with distaste, but his expression was neutral before he drifted his gaze away, finding the trees outside more interesting. Hum, I'm sorry, what for? Well, the way we treated you, and everything. Oikora scoffed inaudibly. Are you really, or are you sorry? Because I finally got pissed, I guess. Both. The brunette slowly turned his head once more. A startled look was evident on his face. I've thought about it for a while. You snapped and said stuff that hurt you. And I don't think we well realized unless you spoke up about it. Which is very shitty of us. I know an apology doesn't fix everything. But I really am sorry. We were your friends and we treated you horribly. I understand if you don't want to forgive me. I just want you to know that I feel very guilty about it. A pair of brown eyes softened as Oikora stared at an anxious Maki who didn't avoid eye contact trying to make the apology as sincere as possible. Then unexpectedly, he broke into a small fit of laughter, covering his mouth with his hand. Meanwhile, Maki had his eyes widened, but soon let out a deep breath he didn't know he was holding. You look so scared it's ridiculous. Thanks for apologizing anyways. Oikora smirked. I'll think about it. After all, it's not really my place to forgive you. We are here, everyone. Let's go. Arihata and Mizoguchi led the team inside, all of them scanning the whole area. Compared to Aoba Jose, Shiratori's aura is gigantic. Heck, you could probably build a residential complex with how wide it is. At the gym entrance, they were instantly greeted by Shiratori's aura coaches, with Shijo and Sato. The four older men shake hands and exchange greetings. I can't see your team anywhere. Oh. They're in the changing room. They'll be here in a minute. Then can I go to the toilet for a bit coach? Of course. Hurry back. Alright. Yes sir. Oikora flashed his coach a peace sign before running out the door until he stopped in the middle of the hallway when he realizes that he didn't know where the toilet room is. Guess I'll just have to figure it out. He scanned the whole place, trying to spot something that can lead him to the right direction. What happened next was something he hated the most yet what he precisely expected. A shiwaka standing in front of him with his typical expressionless face. Oikora. His blood boiled at the sound of that voice. Bastard Ashiwaka. I do not appreciate you calling me such a vulgar name. Too bad. See you on the court. Oikora continued his steps, 
walking past the Shiratori's oasis, after a few seconds, a Shijima turned on his heel to look at the back of the brunette. You should have come to Shiratori's aura. The setter stopped and groaned. Oh come on, not this shit again. You're like that in this world too. I'm not sure what you're talking about. But, boy Kaua raised a bro. The thing that happened a few days ago. It will not happen again if you join us. We need your skills. And we are never going to treat you badly. Ha. Huh. You complained about receiving horrible treatment. Did you not? But with us, you'll become a very valuable asset and team member. I will even give you the role of a captain if you wish. Wah. Wow. No way. My goal is to beat you and go to nationals. You mean with the people who are unable to appreciate you even once. You are their captain. But what team is worth when they could not give an ounce of respect for their leader? I'm certain you know that very well. A Shijima turned around, think about it, and he walked away, leaving Oikoa with clenched fists and an irritated smirk. That little, TCH, and he's not even wrong. Once Oikoa returned, it's like the atmosphere shifted 180 degrees as he joined the others who were gathering around the coaches. Now that you're all here, our practice match for today will be different. Confusion was plastered on each of their faces as they listened intently. Both of the teams would be mixed. Huh. You're all a talented bunch, so it shouldn't be difficult to adjust. Shira Torres Oya and Aoba Jose will be split into two with half joining the opposite team. The list is already made. <laughs> So you're saying we won't be playing against all of them? Yes, Mizoguchi-san, if you'd do the honors. Mizoguchi nodded and began unfolding the list in his hand. The first team consists of Tendao, Matsukawa, Yamagata, Iwaizumi. The coach read all the names, but Oikawa was never mentioned. Well, he isn't really paying attention much anyways. Too busy distracted by the size of the gym. And last of team 2, we have a Shijima and Oikawa. Yeah, <laughs> boy. Ha. Huh. Oh, we are screwed. Yep. Meanwhile, Oikawa was having a mental breakdown. Why do I have to be in the same team as him? No. Out of nowhere, a Shijima came up from behind, making him almost jump. I knew it was fate. Gap. Stop being so obsessed with me. Before the first set began, the two teams discussed their strategy. No matter how much Oikawa wanted to refuse working together with the Shibuka, he had to. Besides, this is only a practice match. Right. Yeah. No biggie. I can do this. As he stood in his position, he discreetly glances at a Shijima. How do I make one hard spike to the head an accident? Yunohama. Nice serve. The whistle blew, and it was the first team's turn. Yunohama did a jump float serve, and the ball flew to the other side of the court. Watari stood, eyeing the ball that was coming towards him. It's out, he thought. Then his eyes widened in realization. Wait, no. He immediately leaned to the side, receiving the ball who was about to fall inside the line. Damn, it's short. Oikawa gritted his teeth, running towards the ball and set it into the air. A Shibuka, even before his name was called, a Shijima was already running towards it, spiking the ball with power and strength that Tendao, who tried blocking the ball, was pushed back by force. That's one point for them. The court was silent, but a Shijima's head rotated to face Oikawa. You set it too low. Shut your damn mouth. From the other team, Kyotani observed the quarrel between Ashijima and Oikawa. His eyebrows furrowed in frustration. There, scary, on the bench, Coach Sato mumbled to himself, a force to be reckoned with. The first and third set was easily won by the second team. Ashijima and Oikawa's monster serves were obviously taking a huge part in it. Toru tried catching his breath. Drinking from his water bottle when a certain boy with parted copper-colored hair approached him. Oikora-san, he opened his eyes, looking down onto the younger boy, who had slightly bowed his head. I'm sorry, and thank you. Shiribu walked away with no explanation whatsoever, and Oikora's eyes followed his figure for a short while. Hum, weird kid. Oikora-san, you were amazing. Watari exclaimed as he jogged closer, I am, aren't I, I hate that I had to actually set the ball to a Shibuka though, he isn't that bad of a teammate you know, if you're trying to make me hate him less, don't even bother, ha ha ha, okay, but I wanted to say you two are really cool, both of you combined would probably crush the rest of the teams in Japan, it certainly looks like an over exaggeration, but the author believes it isn't, humph, I'd rather team up with Tobio-chan, really.
No, you're very picky, Oikora-san, I'm not. Everyone gather around, Mizogachi calls, and the Haleo Bajose team formed a circle. Great job, that was better than we anticipated. You guys adjusted to the change really fast. The offense and defense dynamic was wonderful, and your individual skills were shown throughout the match as well. You were in a team with new members and sets of skills that you've been playing against, rather than with them, and I'm happy to say that I'm satisfied by the game. I'm assuming you learned a few things from this. The team slowly nodded, but now, his expression changed into one of seriousness and everyone immediately tenses. Learn how to appreciate every single person and work with them. You're a great team. To lose one valuable teammate will be a threat to all of you. Coach Irihata shifted back into his laid-back attitude, smiling at them. Now go pack your stuff. We'll be returning soon. Matsuko zipped his bag, swinging it above his shoulder. The coach's words were ringing in his ears. To lose one valuable teammate, the others were already walking ahead of him. So Tendao wasted no time to cheerfully approach the wavy black-haired male, matsuko -kun. Tendao, you're blocking, I don't like it, then I can say the same to you, if Matson could control where the spikers would hit the ball, Tendao was a monster at guessing, perhaps that's why they were placed against Oikoa and Ashijima, well that's it, I'll see you later, yeah, Matson walked away, trying to catch up with the rest of his team, however, he stopped in his track when he spotted something odd and walked closer, request, match, issue, ha, you, Shiratora Zora, win, have, reward, Oikoa looked flabbergasted before he seemingly shouted at a Shibuka, but Matson wasn't close enough to hear all of it, you, more, than him, I accept, finally, alone, a Shijima nodded, extending his hand for a handshake, Matson's eyes widened when Oikoa actually returned it, what are they doing, again, Coach Arihata's words echoed in his mind, learn to appreciate every single person before you lose them, Matson quickly turned on his heel anxiously, leaving the scene with messy thoughts scattered all over his brain. I was definitely not satisfied by this but what can I do? Hopefully, the next part won't be as messy because I'm excited for it. I was doing this series for fun in the first place anyways. I truly appreciate all your support. Have a wonderful day and thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.